I've come to Rome to try to understand something of the European Union's spiritual foundation. Rome is the book of Revelation's city on seven hills, and the most important of them was the Capitoline Hill. During the Roman Empire, it was Rome's religious and political centre. It was littered with temples to Rome's pagan gods, including temples and shrines to their chief god, Jupiter, in Italian, Giove. Every year, the first meeting of the Roman Senate would take place in the main temple to Jupiter, the temple of Jupiter Optimus Maximus Capitolinus, on the southern peak of this hill. You see, to the Romans, the Temple of Jupiter, which dominated the peak, was the symbol of the sovereignty and power of Rome, of her immortality as the eternal city. The temple was religious and political. Satan's seat in Pergamos, in Revelation chapter 2, was the site of an altar to Zeus, the chief of the Greek gods. The Romans adopted all the pagan Greek gods and renamed Zeus as Jupiter. So the southern peak of this hill, everything on that side of this famous square designed by Michelangelo, is Rome's equivalent of Satan's seat. The blood of Jesus has more power than Satan manifested as Zeus or Jupiter, but no one in power has ever been up here to cast out Jupiter and consecrate the ground to Jesus. The demonic heart of this site is still beating. The Treaty of Rome establishing the European Economic Community was signed on 25th of March 1957 by Belgium, France, Italy, Luxembourg, the Netherlands and West Germany. In the Maastricht Treaty of 1992, the EEC became the European Union, so the Treaty of Rome is the EU's founding document. The treaty was signed on this hill, in that building, the Palazzo dei Conservatori. In fact, it was signed with full pomp and ceremony in this very room. But the Palazzo dei Conservatori was constructed in the Middle Ages on top of Jupiter's temple. It was built using the stones of the temple. At the back of the Palazzo, we can even see part of the temple's foundations. You know, whatever the faith of the EEC's founders, to sign their treaty in this place was a snub to Europe's Christian heritage. If you wanted to revive the Roman Empire, there would be no more appropriate place to do so. Over 40 years later, a constitution for the European Union was proposed. Despite the prayers of Christians and the lobbying of both the Catholic and Orthodox churches, it deliberately omitted any reference to Almighty God, let alone the King of Kings, the Lord Jesus Christ. The resulting humanist constitution was never ratified. It was rejected by both the French people and the Dutch. And just where did the 25 heads of state gather to sign it in October 2004? Right there, in the same room of the Palazzo del Conservatore right on top of Satan's seat. In Revelation chapter 17, we read of the whore who represents Rome and its empire. She is sat on the beast of Antichrist, just as Rome was sat on Jupiter, and Europa is sat on Zeus in various depictions across the EU. We read that the kings or rulers who are coming in the spirit of the beast, of the Antichrist, of Zeus or Jupiter, shall make war with the Lamb, that's Jesus, and the Lamb shall overcome them, for he is Lord of Lords and King of Kings, and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. So who do we want to be with? With the King of Kings or with the Roman Empire revived in the spirit of Antichrist? That is the question and not just the British must answer in our referendum, but all the peoples of Europe.